Welcome to Rex Corner. I got Doug Brignoli back. You guys have been asking about him for a long time. They ask about you all the time. That's good to hear. It's good to be. It like- is good to hear. It's good to hear. We just had lunch. He was like an hour and a half late, but that's okay. He's here. Well, because of the GPS. I'll blame the GPS. <laughs> yeah, the GPS threw him off. But he has some devices we're going to talk about and uh, things he's come up with uh, for working out. And we're going to see what this is all about. You know, when I work out in the gym, a lot of times someone knows that Doug is here or has been here when they see some weird setup. Yeah. I always come up with these weird, but I just love this stuff, and and I love. Uh, customizing. Yeah. So, you know, when I was doing these dumbbell curls, you know, sometimes I'd incline the bench back a little bit and I thought, wouldn't it be great if somebody just held your elbow there? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I basically came up with this thing. (laughs) And I encourage you all just to go to the to go to the Home Depot, the local, you know, hardware store and just buy yourself, you know, a piece of wood and just cut it. This is six inches wide here. It's 14 inches wide here. It's four inches wide here, and it's 20 inches wide here. And basically, this just goes behind you on the bench, on an inclined bench, and it holds your elbows. Your arms are right here. As you curl, exactly. Great idea. And it's a game changer. I mean, it changes the feel of that exercise. Now, I will tell you, if you recline that bench too far back, it'll tend to hyperextend your elbows. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, so you can't go back too far. Right. You only want a slight incline, but guaranteed, if you try this, I mean, obviously, this is not something worth commercializing. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't really make this and sell this. So no, no. But it's so easy to make. I mean, it literally took me like 12 minutes to, to cut it in my garage with a circular saw. What about the, the, the distance from the tee? Because incline benches might have different seat patterns. Well, look, sometimes where the seat comes down, it's adjustable. It could fall behind the seat. Well, well, here's the thing. That's a good question. Here's the thing. All benches are 10 inches wide. Okay. Okay, so this is six inches wide so that it doesn't go right to the edges of the bench mm-hmm. and then dig into your sides. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's why I made this six inches. Then I put a towel down in oh, the good bench. Oh, good idea, yeah. So it doesn't sink in between the seat. Yeah. Okay, yeah, otherwise yeah. it'd be too cumbersome to actually create a plate down here. Right, exactly. Just put a towel down here, keeps it from falling. And I and then I also throw another towel here, another t- and Rick is going to put up a picture that I sent him of me using it in the gym right. where you can see where you can soften this just with a couple of towels. Yeah, you need some cushion on your arm. Yeah, now, you could also, if you really wanted to get fancy, you could take this to an upholsterer, and they could put a piece of upholstery right here. Upholstery of your choice, leopard right? Or the color of your choice, match your your gym yeah. benches. But, but it's such an easy thing to make, yeah. and it's a little bit of a hassle to take to the gym, I guess. Actually, I'm thinking that would be good. you could upholster it and pad it. Yeah, but yeah, I'm telling you, it made my bicep workout feel dramatically different, hmm. better. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. So, so the next thing, like we discussed at lunch, it's very similar to remember the master blaster that we just came out. Yeah. With, that hung over your chest and you yeah. could curl. They still have one in my gym. Well, and that's still works. I mean, you could actually use that, except this has let your elbows go back a little bit right. farther. That one is kind of uncomfortable. And it doesn't compress your chest. Right. Okay. And and the strap on your neck and all yeah, that. Yeah, they have a machine in my gym which is selectorized that you sit back and you can adjust it this way and it has the handles. It's a machine. Though. It's a machine yeah. and it's not the same as a dumbbell. No, I like the, the way to free weight. Yeah, I do yeah, too. Feel free weight. So the other thing that I sort of invented, um, you know, all, all handles, you know, are the same. Mm-hmm. But I wanted a hammer handle. Mm-hmm. So this allows you to use a cable mm-hmm. and do either a cable hammer grip curl or a hammer grip push down. And so it pivots. And so this is a prototype, you know. Right, so uh, if you're going to curl, it's going to come from the ground up. Right, it's going to come from a cable. Right, okay. And then from the, from the top. If you do a push down, it's going to come from above. Oh, I like this idea. And it swivels. And it swivels both ways. So, and I, I invented it, I thought of it, and I thought, wouldn't it be great if, so I made it out of balsa wood, yeah. originally, and then I went to a, a you know, a, a tool and die guy, and so now I've got a patent on it, and now I'm, I'm seeing about, you know, mass manufacturing it. Was this a costly thing to make? The one, yeah, oh, the first yeah one. I mean, it'll cost me, if I have it made in China, it'll have me, it'll cost between 25 and $45 per unit, um, depending on whether I buy 200, 500, or 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I have another question. This is really cool, you guys. You, you could probably do very well using this. You have this made out of metal. Right. And it's got its own weight, probably, what, five pounds, seven and, pounds? And you, we're going to make it out of a thinner metal. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. You can make it out of a composite that has really not much weight to it at well, all. Well, we thought about making it out of like a hard plastic. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, but the problem with that is you have to make the mold, and making the mold is very expensive. The mold, and they, they do injection molding with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First mold. You could also make it out of aluminum. That, too. I've seen them make those molds. They make yeah. them out of clay. Yeah. Then they inject them and they pull them apart, and it's yeah. like doing a, a mask. And, 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 and I might eventually do that, but but the point is that I just wanted it to be functional at first. No, I understand that. So but that I can test it. Is you can feel the weight. So you got to add this weight to your we, pulley. You add it to the curl. You subtract it from the push you down. Subtract it from the push down, right? Yeah, yeah. 
very good idea. But it's kind of fun to invent things and design things. Yeah. I always think, what if, what if, what if I... When I was a kid, I would build the doghouse in the backyard, and I was always making things. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. That's a great idea. You know, I, I read somewhere, I don't know if you and I discussed about different types of exercises that work, and I think it was Vince Geron that said he would take one exercise and try it, and if he got sore from it, he knew it was working in the right spot. Well, I could hit you on the arm, and it would Remember make that conversation. <laughs> I mean, because you, you don't know when, when hammer curls are working or they're doing this, they do have their purpose. Well, yes. Look, when you do a hammer curl, what you do is you subtract some of the load from the bicep and you add it to the brachioradialis. Yes. And so you get a more balanced arm development. Yes. That's what I like about a hammer grip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the tricep one arm down, I mean, I, I usually use the rope or I use the pulley of yeah. a little ball when I'm doing these. Well, the but fact I, is, the, the fact is, the, the elbow follows the hand. Okay. Right? So if you try to turn your hand palm down, the elbow will go out. So it, you, what you want is you want alignment. Remember we talked about yes. alignment? Yes. You want the resistance to go straight through the origin and the insertion of the muscle and the lever and the resistance and yeah. the movement all on one line. Right. The only way you could do that is either with either a hammer grip or a slightly palm up grip. Okay. As soon as you start to go this way, you start to put, bring your elbow up and you start to lose the alignment. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. I, I get that for sure. I mean, people talk about turning your palms up or palms down for a different part of the triceps. It does not do that. The tricep comes down and ties into one little bone yes. on your elbow. Yes. And it has no idea which direction you're pulling. Well, I have a face. question. If you if you have your bicep and you turn your hand here to here to yeah. here, you can see your bicep move. That's, it goes up and it goes down. Right. That well, the bicep is different than the tricep. Okay. It doesn't change the shape of the bicep. It does change how much of the bicep participates in the movement versus the brachioradialis. Oh yeah, you're right. I get that. Right. Yeah. So, but that's the bicep issue. The tricep has none of that. Right. The tricep is 100% tricep every time. Okay. Um, I notice that when I do curls on a bar, say I'm doing a cable from the bottom and I take a straight bar, it feels different than an easy curl bar. However, I found a bar that has two balls on the end. If I hold those balls like this yeah. and I curl, I really feel it. Well, I always tell people, follow your comfort. Yeah, yeah, you follow your comfort. Follow your comfort, yeah. That bar's not always available, but <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, your body is telling you this is what I like. Now, the difference between tricep pushdowns with a straight bar or a uh, V-type bar yeah. or a rope are three different types of feel feelings to me. Uh, yeah, I can see that. I mean, look, if, if I was your tricep muscle, right, and I just start here at the shoulder blade and I yeah. come down and I tie into that bone, yeah. and I have no eyes, I have no idea what you're doing, I'm just bringing the two ends together, Right. Um, all I know is I'm pulling on that bone. I have no idea if you said which way is my, is my palm facing, I wouldn't know. Yeah. Um, if I, if you said, you know, am I, is the machine I'm using red or is it white, I, I wouldn't know, right? Right, right. So, you know, there's other muscles that maybe come into the picture. If you start doing this, maybe you start involving the rear delta yeah. more and all kinds of things. Yeah. But as far as the tricep is concerned, and by the way, the tricep doesn't know whether the rear delta is also assisting right now. Yeah. It's only doing what it does. Well, we had talked once about tricep kickbacks, and you said that they're not that great of an exercise for the tricep. The tricep kickback isn't, and the reason for that is because it's too heavy at the end and too light at the beginning. And I get that. And however, it's, it's backward from how, the resistance. However, the if I do them first in my workout, just do three or four yeah. sets, I get a terrific pump from it. Well, look, I'm not going to say that you don't feel it, and yeah. I'm not, not going to say that you don't get a good pump, but what I'm saying is that a muscle is strongest when it's elongated and weakest when it's shortened. Okay. So if you do a tricep kickback, you're depriving the muscle of resistance when it most can handle it, when it most needs it, when it most wants it, you get zero, and then at the end, you get the most. Now, you can get sore from that, but will you grow from that? No, because you can't load the muscle up as much as you would be on skull crushers. Skull crushers loads up the early part of the movement, and lines it up at the latter part of the movement, mm -hmm. and so you load the tricep more. Mm -hmm. okay. There is no direct correlation between soreness no, and pump that. I see and growth. That. Okay. Um, are we done with this now? We're done. Okay, I have something else I want to bring up. Okay. Because since we're on a, that track, Somebody emailed me and they asked me, how important is a pump during your workout? Because you have to have a pump in order to grow. And I didn't really know quite how, how to answer that because I don't think you definitely have to have a pump to grow. You have to work the muscle and let it feed itself and grow again. Right. A pump is more of a satisfying thing in your brain saying, oh my God, I got a great pump today, so yeah. it must be growing. Well, it, it's fair to say that the, the pump is usually commensurate, equal mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the amount of load you get. Mm -hmm. Usually, not always, but soreness isn't. Mm -hmm. So soreness is less of an indicator that you had a good workout yesterday than whether or not you had a good pump. Okay. That's a little bit better act, uh, predictor okay. of whether you had a good workout. A pump is also based on a couple of things to me. Number one, did you get a good night's sleep the night before? 
And number two, yeah. did I get enough nutrition before right. my workout in order to give myself a puff? Any right. carbs? Look, if I take my hands and I squeeze them together like this, yeah. and I contract my, my pectoral muscles and I hold this for two minutes, yeah. I'm going to get a chest pump. Yeah. I'm going to get a chest burn. I might be sore tomorrow. Didn't my chest grow? Not from that. Not from isometric. Yeah. I mean, it's been proven time and time again that isometric exercise produces less growth and strengthens the muscle only there. Not here, not here, not here. Not through its full range of motion. Yet uh, Diamond Dallas Page has this, this um, um, cardio workout where you stand and you do different moves and hold. Right. You got his heart rate way up in three minutes. Well, heart rate. Which he was burning fat. Yeah. Well, heart rate is heart rate. Heart yeah. is a different issue. Yeah. But I, I mean, mean you just can, by doing that type of a movement. If you combine these things, you can get your heart rate elevated, which is calorie spending. It's, right. It's, it's cardiovascular benefits, all that, but the question is, will that muscle grow from it? Yeah. It's, you know, in my book, I talk about Charles Atlas. Mm -hmm. And Charles Atlas, you know, invented this course called the Dynamic Exercise Course, which is just the opposite of dynamic exercise. It's isometric exercise, mm -hmm. right? And I say, you know, we wouldn't fall for this today. The idea that you could build this muscular physique just by doing isometric exercise, and yet he sold half a million courses back then. Isometrics to me are just like posing. Well, there, there is some benefit to it. I yeah. mean, physical therapists use it all the time, especially mm -hmm. when you have a joint problem mm -hmm. that prohibits joint movement. And you want to work those muscles without the joint movement. creating the joint problem. Yeah. But the posing itself will also help cut you up a little bit. Well, I don't know about cut you up. I mean, when, you, when you're talking about cutting up, you're talking about fat loss. Well, it brings out the striations. Yeah, it helps you learn to control the flex. Okay. So that can translate into... Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Let's talk about this. Okay. Well, um, I'm doing an exhibition for Bill Pearl. Bill Pearl was my mentor 41 years ago. When, what I, was, a guy. when I was 16 years old, I walked into... Well, actually, 15. I walked into Bill Pearl's gym in Pasadena, and I could not afford membership. And I said, uh, would you allow me to scrub your showers in exchange for membership? And he said, yes. And every Saturday, I would go in there, and I would do janitorial work. And he paid me. It wasn't just like child labor. <laughs> And uh, in exchange, I would also get a you know, week's membership. And of course, he mentored me, and he taught me this, taught me that. And now I get the privilege of doing an exhibition for Bill Pearl, who's about 80 years old, right. at his Medford Classic, which is a competition he's holding. It's going to come up on the screen here in just a second. Um, up in Medford, Oregon, yes. uh, which is about two and a half weeks from today. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've been dieting. You can probably tell how friendly my face is and how veiny I'm getting now and all that. But I have the exhibition. Uh, in Oregon for Bill Pearl. Speaking of dieting, he had a chicken breast and iced tea for lunch. That was it. That was it. Made me hungry. That was it. And then, seven weeks from today, I'm competing in the World Championship, WFF World Championship in, in uh, Dublin, Ireland. That's November uh, 6th. That'd be a nice trip. And then November 12th, one week later, I'm doing an exhibition at the Naba Nationals in Pennsylvania. John Lucas is the promoter. They've got a wonderful venue called Spooky Nuke Sports Complex, one of the biggest in the country. Uh, custom staging, custom lighting, the best bodybuilders in the country. And so I get the privilege of doing an exhibition as my final presentation of my 40-year competitive career How nice. at the NABA Nationals. That's really nice. So There's a lot of posing in a couple of weeks. Yeah, um, I, this is... This is my swan song. Yeah, this is swan song. Yeah. That's when the fat lady sings. In the this is when, that's right. <laughs> now we have your book. And, and we have the book. And we talked about it last time. The Physics of Fitness is finally finished. Well, it's finally finished as a manuscript, which means that um, you can order it from me. I can send you this unedited manuscript. It still has to be edited. I need to do a lot more work on it before I can actually get it printed slash published. But the content is here. It's all there, and you've sold quite a few. I've sold about 54 now, yeah. Yeah, which is nice. Um, and it's, it's packed with really valuable information. I mean, you know, some of these conclusions that you'll read in the book are, are, are pretty fascinating. I'll give you one example. You know, when we do lying down leg curls, face down prone, you know how that tailbone wants to come up? Yeah. Okay? And then some trainers will push down that tailbone yes. because yes. they say you're cheating if you do that? That's the wrong thing to do. There's a reason why that tailbone wants to come up. And the reason is reciprocal innervation. And what that means is that our bodies are designed to not compete with itself. Mm -hmm. So if I load my bicep with a curl, my tricep is relaxing, and it's doing that by way of a central nervous system message 
called the relaxation synapse, which is being sent to the tricep, saying don't contract now because it'll, it'll interfere with the bicep function. Okay? Well, the same thing happens when you do a leg curl lying down. When you are in that flat position, your ham, excuse me, your quadricep stretches yeah. when you do your leg curl. Right. And the central nervous system is perceiving that as activation. It's competition. It's a conflict of interest. It's, it's sending a, a relaxation synapse to the hamstring, and so it doesn't know whether to go or not go. And so your tailbone rises up in order to create relaxation in the quadricep. Wow, that's interesting. That's a very well way to put it. And it's a, it's a, when in, in the way you would know this, and yeah. you can test this at home, all you'd have to do is put your hands on, on the back of a chair, yeah. put all your weight on your left leg, yeah. take your right leg and move it back so that's behind your left leg, and then do a leg curl from there. And you'll feel your right hamstring cramp up as you're doing that, and you say, I'm not even using any weight. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because as, as long as your leg is back there, you're stretching your quadricep even more, mm -hmm. right? And it's sending more of a relaxation synapse to the hamstring and telling it to shut off. Amazing. Right? So that means that the seated leg curl is the better leg curl because in that piked position, your quadricep is fully relaxed. That's interesting. I've been I've been using that for like uh, two months now. It's, it's it's the better way to go. Um, you can really control your your hamstring with that. Position. Yes. And now here's another thing is. Yeah. If you don't believe me, try holding the contracted position on a prone, flat leg curl with, let's say, 60 pounds, and you won't be able to. Yeah. You will be able to on a seated. Yes. Even with 70 or 80 or 90 yes. pounds. Yes, yes. Why? Because the quadricep isn't stretching. It's not. And it's not being sent a relaxation synapse to the hamstring. There's it's not. There's no competition going on there. So we're going to get this book. So th these are the kinds of things that are revealed in this book, which will change everything about the way you train. All you got to do is email me at my email address, dbfitness at aol.com. Or you can just send $50 to my PayPal account under the same dbfitness at aol.com. Your email address will appear there, and I'll send you the download link. And your life will change. <laughs> Somebody had said uh, fifty dollars for a book's a lot of money. Well, that's not. And then another friend of mine said I, he says I think he's underpricing it. That book's worth a lot more. Look, we're talking about first of all forty years of experience, right. nine years in the actual making. Yeah. That one tip I just gave you about the hamstring alone is worth fifty bucks. Well, that's what I'm saying. You're paying for knowledge. <laughs> I mean, people, some people they just they just want everything given to them and the say uh, and free and just I uh, just take it and use it. You got to pay for knowledge. Well, look, I mean, it, 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 let me put it to you this way: you can offset it. You can say fifty dollars amortized by how many more years? Yeah. Right. If I live another twenty or thirty years, and you divide it out, and you go, but look how much better my workouts got. Look how much I saved my joints. Right. Look how much growth I got. You know, it's like pennies. Yeah, that's very true. Pennies, yeah. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. I want to thank you for being here. You always bring such interesting things to the table. <laughs> I mean, it's like the, the board and the hand. I've been accused of overanalyzing things. No, but it, that's okay. But because, I love thinking things yeah, through. Yeah, because when you think it through, it makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Thanks, Doug. My pleasure. Thank you. You Focus. guys know how to reach him, and uh, we'll see you next time.
That's rickdrayson.com. He is the equalizer.